Well, good morning. We'll get going with a little bit of safety tip Sunday. So, I'm always.
always searching for new topics, and uh, hopefully I give some good entertaining ones, but I'm starting to run out. So you guys, if you have an idea, let me know. I'm always open to Pardon? It's settling down. So one of the last slides I had Sandy add, thinking about what's been going on lately, is calving season. It's calving season for elk and moose, and mamas get very, very protective and aggressive, so keep it in mind. Um, yeah. Yeah, actually I saw a video on news of a mama moose chasing a grizzly bear that had gotten one of her calves and was going after the other one. And uh, so if a mama can chase off a grizzly bear, you know it's pretty serious business. So let's not tempt them. So then on to bears, which we all know we got a lot of those. Sandy put together some cute slides. Go ahead. If it's brown, lay down. If it's black, lay back. Unfortunately, we don't have grizzlies here, so we just have the black bears. Make yourself, yeah. <laughs> if it's white, we do that one yet. Yeah, so luckily we don't have any uh, polar bears. Big thing though with bears, I mean, yeah, try to avoid them, but don't run, remain calm. If you have a group together, pick up small children. Also, a good thing to remember if there's children in the group, they're on a hike, put them at the middle of the pack. We hear in the news once in a while, a mountain lion grabbing the one that's in the back. So, but yeah, bears, they're pretty easy to scare away. Every time I've ever run into one, they're almost more scared than I am of them, so. Bear spray is not a bad thing to have, though, if you're not caught. Pardon? It depends on the bear spray. If you get the one that will stop a charging grizzly at 30 feet, that's probably some pretty potent stuff. And actually, I had my mother in law, she wanted a gun to protect herself at home. And I said, that's, that's not a good one. So I got her some of that kind of bear spray. I said, because an older woman going like this with a gun is probably not going to be very effective, but bear spray.
keep the scent down and keep things locked up. Actually, we have things on, on our windows at home to where you can push these tabs out and they'll only open that far. We used to have regular windows and I was always worried about keeping them open overnight because the bear, at least with these, will stop them. So. Next thing is a subject that everybody enjoys, ticks. And there's like 30 different species in Colorado of, of ticks. Uh, most common is the uh, Rocky Mountain wood tick and the American dog tick. And of course, start in the spring through the summer, all through this area. There are a few things that you can do to uh, keep them off you. Uh, Permethrin treated clothing or gaiters. It's an insecticide that can be safely applied to your clothing or outdoor gears, but never applied to the skin. So evidently it's pretty, pretty wicked stuff. Uh, but other ones that have uh, DEET or something like that, regular bug repellents, help some. Light colored clothing, long sleeve pants and shirts. So it's, the biggest thing is so it's easier to see them. Always try and check yourself for ticks. Check along your hairline, and, or get dressed and undressed along the pant lines and things like that. Oh, here it says, avoid sleeping with your pets. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> we fail on that one. <laughs> one time we had four dogs at a time on our bed, but now we only have two. But shows all the different areas to look. Ticks. I don't know, do, do you guys experience much ticks around this area? Because luckily I don't know where I'm at in 10 years and we do all of our own firewood and everything and I think we've only discovered ticks once or twice so thankfully we don't. There's Colorado tick fever is the most common here in uh, Colorado but if you get it there's really nothing they can do for it. Uh, and it'll just, it, and look, we're looking at everything that makes us have a fever, chills, headache, body aches, feeling tired. You know, we never would have thought COVID before, but those are the same things that you'll get with ticks. Luckily, we don't really have Lyme disease. The only cases in Colorado are usually brought in from out of state. Um, tola, tularemia? Tularemia. Yeah, it's been reported in all states except for Hawaii. Uh, it's transmitted to humans, including the dog tick, wood tick, lone star tick, and other transmission routes that are even through a deer fly bite, inhalation, in, ingestion through, and through the skin and contact with animals. Next one, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, even though it says Rocky Mountain. Very, very rare in the state of Colorado, but unfortunately, it, be, it can be a lot more serious than the other ones and go into worse, uh, um, the illness can be much more serious, but the antibiotic doxycycline actually will treat for that one. So at least there's a treatment, but it's really, really rare in Colorado. As I already said, Lyme disease, uh, removing ticks, I remember so many old wives' tales on how to remove ticks and touching their rear with a match and doing everything, but what they recommend the best is with fine tip tweezers, get as close to the skin as possible and pull up steady with even pressure. Don't twist or jerk because then the mouth parts will break off. And don't squeeze it because by squeezing it, it pushes its saliva into you more. And it says avoid folk folklore remedies, painting a tick with nails polish, covering it with petroleum jelly, or the heat trick, I guess it. Biggest thing is get rid of it as soon as you can, and then thoroughly clean the area with soap or alcohol, rubbing alcohol, probably not regular, you know. Some alcohol. But anyway, and, and they do say if you have worries of what kind it is, you can save it and 
there's a ways that you can send it off to get it tested and everything. But the biggest thing is if you do get a tick and remove it and you get a rash or a fever, you want to see your doctor. They, they have what they call, what is it? It's a, uh, like a piggyback fever. You get a fever and all of a sudden it's over and oh, here it comes again. And that's kind of a symptom of having the uh, Colorado tick fever. So if you have that, it's probably a good idea to follow up with your doctor. Let them know when, how long ago it was. So another big danger we have this year, we know so much about, is thunderstorms, lightning, hail. Leading cause of death and injury from weather-related incidents. Even Lee Martino. Clean up a joke of his. He had been hit a few times, of course, when playing golf, and he was doing his own yard one day out there mowing. And some lady stopped by and saw this Hispanic-looking man doing yard work and wanted to know, you know, how much he gets paid for that. And he says, "Well, lady who lives here so lets me sleep with her." <laughs> I thought that was cute. Anyway. <laughs> So anyway, thunderstorms, of course we know powerful winds, you'll have a gust front out in front of them. So it's weird, sometimes you think winds usually come from the west, but if you got a storm over here, the gust front will go out from all sides. It's one of the jobs I had when working for the National Center for Atmospheric Research, flying in airplanes, trying to catch a tornado as it came out. And got a lot closer than I wanted to. And you're doing that flying 500 feet off the deck. So you, know, you had the downturns and everything, and that was intent, intimidating. Tornadoes in the mountains, never heard about them as a kid, but we get them over in South Park all the time. They fall along the reservoirs and they go up that track right up to uh, Lake George. Actually, we had, had them on my side of, I'm on the other side of 39 Mile Mountain, and had them damage trees in our area, and, on my property and about a half mile away, but the thing nice when I worked for, for NCAR was I was with the lead scientist in the world for this region, and he said, west of I-25, there's never been a supercell tornado. Even though these little ones, if they hit you directly, yeah, it's a bad news, but at least it's not the widespread. And you know, they always say, oh, lay down in a ditch or something like that. Well, we would do after the event, uh, research on what kind of damage it did, those supercell ones would pull up blacktop pavement from highways. So I don't think Lane and did ditch with one of those. So I just decided not to uh, settle in the Midwest. Uh, with thunderstorms, you know, you definitely want to go indoors, move from indoors or into a building or in a car. Don't use landline phones. Um, uh, unplug at appliances if you can. Another interesting, if lightning's going on, don't take a shower, because it can follow your plumbing if it hits your house. So, and you know, with the appliances, my grandfather got knocked over backwards by it came down through his TV and a ball of fire came across the living room and knocked him over in his chair. So best just to turn everything off and unplug it if you can. And I am really bad about this when there's a lightning storm in it, you know, it's rumbling over there. And it's, well, lightning can travel up to 10 to 12 miles from the thunderstorm. And uh, I always thought the rule of thumb for how far away you count the seconds, you know, one second, two second. It's actually, it takes five seconds for that sound to travel a full mile. So if you're hearing it within the report within one or two seconds, that's really close. And of course, living up here, there's a lot of times, as soon as you see it, you see it and hear it at the same time. That's not a good thing. But when you start seeing the big white towering clouds starting to build, you're getting convection. There's enough heat to, to draw it up. You can hear it. You can see the hair standing on it and feeling tingling. That's not a good sign. Actually, you even start tasting, having a metallic taste. You smell ozone in the air, start to get dizzy or sweat. How many things make us dizzy and sweat? 
I get that when there's not a cloud in the sky. So, <laughs> but it, and it does say though, if you are out in it, for one, don't go by one lone tree. And if you are stuck out in it, crunch down and be on the balls of your feet. That, that much less contact for, for grounding. And there's some interesting true or false questions that came up. Uh, lightning cannot strike the same place twice. Empire State Building's been receives 100 strikes each year. So, and I know that I got uh, lightning rods from my grandfather's farm. And we'd always look outside to see if they were shiny because the brass gets green after time. And next day after a storm, oh, they're nice and bright and shiny now. I guess we know what happened. So I've got them on both ends of my house, the crest on both ends and grounded. Um, to harm someone, a lightning bolt must score a direct hit. Most people who are struck by lightning are not directly hit. It can splash off an object and travel along objects of ground. Uh, they had a horrible thing happen in Broomfield years ago. A, the, soft, the baseball team was practicing and the batter was holding a metal bat and it hit the bat and it shattered and it hit all the players. And I think it killed five of them just from it shattering over it. So, um, cordless and cell phones are safe to use during a storm, but you don't want to use the landlines. Uh, rubber soles will protect you from lightning. No, it's way too, way too powerful. It'll blow holes in the bottom of them just fine. Uh, Lightning can happen almost anywhere on Earth and on other planets. Well, yeah, they can strike upwards and they can reach into space and go forever. Uh, if you're on the water, get off of it. Yeah, and here it says, avoid showering and bathing during a thunderstorm because it'll follow your plumbing. I do like how they say, they mention how I told you if you get caught out to crouch down and balls of your feet. And it says, uh, put your hands over your ears and the head between your knees. We used to, and the balls of your feet. But putting your head between your knees, we used to use a, we would further that one on kissing something goodbye. But <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's, Big ones that are real prevalent right now that are addressing us right now. Just please remember what those elk and deer and moose, they'll be very, very aggressive right now. And if you see a fawn, don't save it. The mother can leave all day long. That baby's just fine where it's at. Just leave it alone and don't feed them. Thank you.